In my last video, I tried out Buildify for the first time. This awesome free Blender add-on that lets you quickly generate buildings with just a few clicks. I had fun experimenting, but this time I want to take it further and create something bigger and more detailed. A full-on sci-fi city building with a strong, brutalist vibe. I'll be using the Buildify assets as a starting point, customizing the modules to fit my vision and adding my own details to really bring it to life. And instead of my usual substance painter workflow, I'm going to texture everything using free photos and materials I found online. If you're new to Buildify or want to see how to use it to create more complex buildings, stick around. Let's dive in. All right, let's get started by importing the Buildify assets, the base building and all the parts that come with it. I'm going to assemble a basic structure first, which I'll use to adjust the modules and shape them into the sci-fi city idea I have in mind. Now, I'm not planning to model everything from scratch. I'll start with the assets that come with Buildify, build on top of those, and then add my own custom details later. And to change things up a bit, I won't be using Substance Painter for texturing this time. Instead, I'm trying something different, using photos from the internet. I used to rely on textures.com for this kind of workflow, but ever since they moved away from the free credits model and became fully subscription-based, I've been looking for alternatives. And I think I found a solid one. It's called Texture Ninja. The site has around 5,000 images ready to use as textures, references, decals, you name it. All of the images are community contributed and completely free to use. It's been a fantastic resource so far, so let's kick things off by grabbing some basic concrete textures and begin setting up the modules. Let's start texturing this ground wall. I'll drag and drop one of the images I downloaded from Texture Ninja and hook it up to the base color input of the material. Right now, the model is using its default UV layout, but for this technique to work properly, I'll need to unwrap it differently. At first, I tried my go-to method, cube projection, which usually works great for boxy shapes. If your texture has directional streaks or lines, it's a good idea to align those with the geometry's flow. I typically do that by rotating the UV islands to match the orientation of the lines in the image. The easiest way is to go to the UV tab, use pack islands, and then adjust the rotation alignment under the options, depending on what you need. But as you can see, the result just doesn't look right when using this method. It's not quite what I'm after. So instead of sticking with cube unwrap, I'm switching to project from view. This method takes your current camera angle and projects the mesh onto the UV space accordingly. Just make sure you're looking at the model dead on from the angle you want. You can use Blender's camera alignment hotkeys to snap to the right view quickly. I'll also swap the image for something with more detail, stretch the UVs to fit, and apply the same method to the rest of the mesh. I used this method to texture all of the pieces from Buildify's default models, and honestly, it gave me great results in no time. But there's one problem. The material still looks a bit flat. Just plugging in a photo as the base color can only take you so far, so... So let me show you a quick tip on how you can take a basic photo texture and turn it into a simple PBR material. To create a good PBR material, you ideally want five texture maps. Base color or albedo, normal map, metallic, roughness, and ambient occlusion. These give you the full range of surface detail and realism. But when in a tight spot, depending on your project, you can often get away with just three, base color, roughness, and normal. And in my case, that's all I'll need for this sci-fi city. To create a roughness mask, you can simply connect your image texture to a color ramp node and adjust the sliders to crunch the values until you're happy with the result. Darker areas will appear shinier and lighter areas will be rougher. For the normal map, I'll use the same approach. Just connect the image through a color ramp then plug that into a bump node's height input. Finally, connect the bump output to the normal input of your shader. I'm going to speed up the footage for this part and talk you through some of my thought process while building. If you'd rather skip ahead to the next topic, I'll leave a timestamp so you can jump right to it. To refine the overall look of my sci-fi building, I decided to modify the default Buildify modules. I wanted the structure to feel grander and colder, something inspired by brutalist architecture or perhaps a post-war era where residential buildings had to be thick and durable to withstand damage and offer shelter. It's always a good idea to embed a bit of story into your models, 
It gives them weight and realism. For my custom modules, I made them taller and bulkier. And since Buildify relies on strict dimensions, I also updated the tool's settings to match these new proportions. If you haven't seen my previous video where I break down how Buildify works and how to integrate your own modules, be sure to check that one out first. I won't be explaining much about the tool here, so feel free to pause and come back once you've seen that. All right, this is how the building looks after I finished working on all the construction modules. I added thick wall barriers and heavy corner pillars to reinforce that post-war futuristic aesthetic I was aiming for. Something that feels sturdy, almost like a structure built to endure. Now it's time to move on to the detail elements that will snap onto the main structure and help break up the bulk of the design. First, I'll set up my workspace. I'm importing some of my own models, the same building pack I showed you in the last video, but I'm not planning to use everything from it. Just a few key pieces to help build out the decorative details. I'll also grab some free assets from the Blender Kit add-on and pull in a few models I've collected over the years. I won't go over every single asset I import since not all of them will make the final cut, but I'll walk you through some of the decorative choices I ended up using. I started by duplicating one of the wall pieces and swapping out the doors with one from my own models, just to change things up a bit. Then I duplicated the main wall again and added some graffiti from my pack to bring in a bit more variation and story to the surfaces. Next, I took a few of the decoration props, things like electrical boxes, lamps, and light fixtures, and used them to create different wall variants with a bit more character. I did the same for the upper floor walls too, adding antennas, AC units, cardboard pieces, metal grates, and pipes. Basically anything that could help sell that dense, layered look of a futuristic cityscape. Next, I'm going to create some larger structural segments to break up the bulky, uniform look of the main building. These chunks will add depth and visual interest, and I'm aiming for a slum-like vibe. Like the original structure was later upgraded and expanded without any regulations or design consistency. To get this look, I'll quickly model a few basic shapes, some with window cutouts and maybe a flat roof or two. For the windows, I'm using this scanned model from Blender Kit. It's a photogrammetry model, so it's pretty dense geometry-wise. If you're using something similar, consider using a decimate modifier to keep performance in check. For materials, I'll download a corrugated metal texture from Blender Kit and apply it using the cube projection method. And just a quick note, if your render isn't focused on close-ups, don't stress too much about visible seams. In wide shots or animations, most people won't even notice them. After building a few of these segments, I tried using them with Buildify to have them spawn randomly onto the main structure. But honestly, I wasn't too happy with the results. Most of the time, I ended up with a lot of overlapping geometry, and I had to keep cycling through seed values to find one with decent variation and minimal clipping. Another issue was the size of my segments. They were too large to be placed accurately, and parts of them would often stick out awkwardly from the main building. So in the end, I decided to abandon the procedural placement and just add these bigger details by hand. It gave me more control over their positioning and helped me maintain the look I was going for. And as a final tip for this topic, I wanna to share a quick method to speed up texturing for this kind of model. Similar to the Texture Ninja workflow, you can use photos of entire building facades to create detailed building segments really fast. For example, I found this image of a Soviet era building facade online and used it to texture my building upgrades. The trick is to align your UVs carefully to capture the exact parts of the photo you want. Windows, doors, balconies, and other architectural details. Then, you just extrude and inset the mesh geometry to match those features. These are the assets I ended up with. I added some decorative props to the larger segments and started assembling the buildings for the final scene. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description where you can download the project files from this build for free. You'll get the full Buildify setup along with all the assets I used, so you can explore how everything was put together and maybe even create your own buildings. 
For this part, I used Buildify to quickly create the base building shapes, then diversify the structure with the assets. I'll leave you now with a time lapse of the building process and the final scene assembly, as there isn't much more to add here. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.